Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I am a grad student of botany as well as an avid horticulturalist and I thought that making these videos would be a good way to explain some of the fascinating things about plant biology as well as hopefully provide some relaxation and entertainment while explaining how or why I believe plants to be fascinating the way they are. So the first thing to discuss today is about the hierarchy of life and some core terms. So the tree of life is divided into a handful of different taxonomical levels to better explain where things are in relation to one another. And these are uh, domain, kingdom, division, or phylum, uh, class, order, family, genus, and species. Uh, there are several ways to remember this. Uh, the one I hear taught most commonly is, uh, did King David or Philip come over for good soup? Uh, there are some that are a great deal less appropriate. Uh, you can look those up on your own time. But these are not the only categories life fits into, but it is the main way for things to be organized. So, uh, domain is the largest category, which there are three domains, each encompasses a truly massive part of life, such as one is almost all creatures that have more than one cell and some that do, one is all bacteria, and the third is the archaea bacteria, which are a bit of a strange group. Uh, then you have kingdom, which is the one we'll be dealing with mostly here, which uh, include plants, animals, fungi, uh, stuff like that. Uh, division isn't one that's commonly talked about, but there is a note between division and phylum. Uh, most branches of biology use phylum, except botany uses division. There is some talk of merging them, but I don't really see the point in doing so. Uh, then class and order are also large things, but at least I don't really see them brought up very often. Uh, family is a very big deal. Uh, this one is where, uh, say, all nightshade plants, all orchid plants, uh, all asters, those are organized on families. I would say, personally, that family is the main unit in plant biology followed by genus and species. Now, there are a couple of uh, suffixes that I think are important to know, so orders always end in alleys, and families always end in aishi. Uh, this does not hold true with animals, but once again, this is a plant biology channel, and so I will not be talking about how animals are organized very much here. And then genus and species are what describe very small groups in most cases, so for example, uh, we'll use the humans as an example, uh, so that would be uh, Homo sapiens. Um, this is the genus name, describes that we are people, so this is what we are and uh, sapiens is a characteristic of us, so which one we are. So this would be a uh, thinking human as opposed to, say, Homo erectus, which was a walking human, or upright human. Uh, this um, genus, so the it usually is italicized or underlined if you're writing it, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, you can abbreviate the genus name with the first letter followed by the entire species name uh, after you write out the first time because otherwise you will get confused because there are some genera that share the same first letter so 
write it out the first time and then abbreviate it until you refer to a different one with the same letter. Um, in animal biology, you can encounter cases where the genus name and species name are the same. Like, so, for example, uh, gorilla, uh, gorilla, gorilla. In botany, you do not get this. The genus name must always be different from the species name. You can kind of fudge this with some relatively minor changes, but that just doesn't look so good, in my opinion, unless there's a good reason for it, such as something was mislabeled the first time and then ended up being renamed. Um, I hope I didn't mention this before, but the species epithet, this bit's called the epithet, uh, is lowercase, so you do not see uh, uh, gorilla gorilla. This one's always lowercase. So, with this hierarchy in mind, uh, it now leads us to the second topic for today, which is what is a plant? So, uh, what is a plant? And that's actually a fairly important question because uh, depending on who you ask, you could get different answers. So I will cover four different uh, categories of this today. The widest sense definition, widest sense definition, uh, is obsolete, so not currently used in any serious scientific setting, and it includes uh, fungi, which are their own kingdom, as well as uh, sponges, which are animals. So once again, I only included this for historical reasons, and it should not be used as a serious definition for what a plant is. Then you have the wide sense definition, so wide sense definition, uh, which includes uh, land, plants, green algae, red algae, and brown algae. Now, this one isn't typically used either, because these two uh, algae groups are a bit weird uh, on a microscopic level, and so they're generally considered too diverse to include plants, or to be included as plants. Uh, then you have the narrow sense definition. Narrow sense, which is uh, green algae and land plants. Uh, this one is valid. People do use it. Uh, I personally do recognize it. However, I don't know very much about green algae, so I won't be covering them at all, most likely. So, for my purposes, the definition of the plant kingdom is the strictest sense which is land, plants, only. Uh, land plants are called embryophytes. Embryophytes. Now, something to note about land plants is just because the term is called land plants, it does not mean they all actually live on land. It just means that they are descended from the first one to come on land. So, there are sea grasses and duckweeds and lily pads and stuff like that, which are technically land plants because they had ancestors that lived on land, but obviously now spend most of their time, or all of their time in many species cases, uh, submerged or floating in the water. 
So land plant is just a historical term for some part of their family history and is not a current term for all of them. And then I think the final topic for today is a very important part of uh, plant reproductive structures, which is essential to understanding the four main types of land plants and stages in their evolutionary history. And this incredibly weird phenomenon is called the uh, alternation of generations. Alter So the alternation of generations refers to the unique split between uh, plants and animals in that plants have two generations in reproduction, whereas animals have one. So uh, in uh, animal parents, uh, they undergo meiosis to create the reproductive cells and these end up combining with the other reproductive cells to produce a baby and this happens in one generation so you are the same type of structure as your parents are uh, in plants this is not necessarily the case so in green algae, there is no visible difference, but plants have two generations uh, called the uh, sporophyte and the gametophyte. Now, once again, uh, in green algae, sporophyte and gametophyte look exactly the same, have the same dispersal mechanism, and there is no real reason for difference, but in land plants, this is not true, and there is often a very, very big difference between these two. So the sporophyte undergoes meiosis and creates spores, and each spore grows into a gametophyte. And then the gametophyte uh, produces uh, gametes, and then two of these combine to produce one sporophyte. Uh, sporophytes have two copies of uh, DNA equals uh, diploid, and gametophytes have uh, one copy of DNA equals haploid. So, uh, once again, a sporophyte reproduces asexually to create a gametophyte, and the gametophyte mates with another one, or a different gametophyte, usually to produce a sporophyte. And so sporophyte produces spores, grow into gametes, gamete, or gametophytes produce gametes, which are eggs and sperm, which grow into sporophytes. Um, this also leads to an interesting uh, technical thing, in that sporophytes do not have any sort of sex associated with them. Asexual. So what this means is that they uh, are uh, not male and they uh, are not female. Although, since some sporophytes can only produce male or female spores, this is used as a shorthand for, say, a male plant, quote-unquote, or a female plant, quote-unquote. Meanwhile, the gametophyte Uh, can be male, female, or both. And uh, whether or not it's male, female, or both depends a great deal on what sort of evolutionary stage it is. So primitive plants tend to be able to have both uh, more modern, traditional-looking plants tend to be only one or the other. 
but that is a topic for later. So I hope you had a I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, the next video I will discuss this sort of thing in much more detail by explaining the different types of land plants, how they originated, and what the differences are. I hope you will join me for that video shortly. Uh, thank you, have a good day.